Oh, hello everybody, there you are. Good. I'm glad you've turned up. Today, it's been exactly one year since we bought Jugs, the second Discovery 2, from a place in, in Leicestershire. <laughs> Forgotten already. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Thing is, where are we? Well, um, if you've been following the other uh, videos, then you'll know where we are. Um, we're... Um, Technically, we're not broken down. It's not broken down. Um, can't really use it because of what fell out of the front diff when we changed the oil. But it's not broken down. Anyway, so what else is what else have we done, and have we improved it? Engine, marvellous. Still on its original cylinder head. Can't say further than that. All right, automatic gearbox that overheated when we first got it. We had a look at that and I ended up changing the sensor in the gearbox cooler. Now looking back now, I think that was unnecessary. If we have the same problem, I would first of all check the fan, the cooling fan outside the condenser, then check the air can get through the condenser and the radiator. These were blocked. Okay, so literally it was overflowing. It was overflowing. It was overheating. Um, it was it was genuinely overheating. It wasn't just a sensor fault. So I need to have a look you need to have a look at that first. But as you know, we took it out, put a new sensor in and it's been fine. There was one or two electrical glitches afterwards, interestingly, which have not reappeared. Been no MS lights flashing zilch, nothing. It's been okay until I stopped using it because of the front diff possibly disintegrating, um, locking up, disappearing into the wilderness. Not good. Um, it's not about me, it's about other people that might, you might take with you. Okay, right, so engine, gearbox, we change the wire that feeds the battery to the earth. Well, it's a long one, so I can now put a bigger battery on. Um, what else did we do? We still, <laughs> still haven't done that front fog light. No. Anyway, let's have a quick look around. Side steps, bloody marvellous now, thanks to Andy. Interior. Replacement driver's seat, as you know. The other seat, painted with leather paint because they were pretty damn scruffy. Console, wooden console, recovered. Well, not recovered, re, um, repolished and re-varnished. That was necessary for, for my way of thinking. Different door card, I couldn't do with that scruffy look. Um, still need to do the hinges. Okay. Floor. Carpets dry. There's a false floor under this side. The other side, as you know, carpet dry. We've had that welded to an extremely good standard. So that'll never be a problem again. Originally, well, sorry, not originally, but Eventually, we'll have to do this side as well. This side's not as bad at the moment. Screws around. Interior again, leather paint. That's not too bad. Um, managed to find somewhere to put my old coats, that's lovely. Um, still one, one or two bits of trim missing. So you'll see the old thing there, look. That's okay. Um, roof lining. Well, that's annoying. Not that bit, but that bit there. That annoys me. But to, to fix that, I'd have to take the roof lining out. And at the moment, the the trouble taking the roof lining out outweighs the annoyance from a dangling piece of net. Oh yeah, another thing. The bolsters always wear out because people slide out. Instead of stepping out like gentlemen, the people slide out, that's what destroys the bolster. Otherwise it would be as good as the passenger one forever. So it just needs it's all about exiting gentlemen. Well not exiting women or just just exiting in general. Round the back. Oh. Right. So fix both rear seats. Okay, they wouldn't undo 
and they wouldn't reconnect and it's principally because of a diddy spring I don't believe it's that one, there's another one inside but it, there's two latches and if they don't both disconnect it won't open or come up as you know there's a monkey bit under there but the carpet's covered that I've got most of the oil stain out of there so that doesn't look too bad now, it just looks a bit grubby got some, most of the paint off which was down there got most of the crap off that was on the backs of the seats there we go, I always carry some spares uh, yes, the headphones are for the audio units there the, I've tried these, these are great, they're absolutely fantastic people in the back with the headphones on can listen to either CD, cassette or radio depending on what you fancy that's bloody marvellous no doubt these days lots of cars do that but 21 years ago I thought that was pretty cool so there we go, I've cleaned the carpet I was going to change it, couldn't get hold of them ended up cleaning it and putting the mat on fixed both rear seats fixed the rear base base speakers we have a tool bag there oh <laughs> put some tarted up the tow bar with some black paint tarted up the drive and most of myself as well so come to still tarted up still need to change the back bumper and change the step which is a step entirely in the wrong direction Oh yes, not forgetting the humongous new mud flaps which take at least 20 miles an hour off your top speed. Oh yeah. This side. Mmm. Yeah, okay, what can I say? What's that? Alright. Dry carpets. That's because we sussed out where the leak was coming from. Well, <laughs> Where isn't it coming from? We know it comes from the sunroofs, from the ceilings itself, from the drain pipes, from the little plastic things that fall off. We know it comes in between this cover and the metal bit and it scoops over, scoops up and goes down the air pillar and into the bottom there. We know if there's a hole here, as Morris pointed out, where the check strap is, water can get in there. Water can also get in from your roof and there, top of the windscreen. That's a favourite. That was an official Land Rover fix. Then, of course, where it really was coming in was this bulkhead. Yeah, and difficult to see until you take the bonnet off and actually lie on the top and obviously take that off. So we changed the wiper motor, it turned out to be the wiper stalk. Right, so that's where the water is coming in as well, it's rotted. Lovely bit of welding down there. We changed an engine mounting on this side because the engine has dropped a tiny bit and it was vibrating. I can't see it now, but you'll be able to see it. Just down there, look on that plastic shield. Yes, we still have the gearbox mountings to do. Uh, we did the wiper, um, oh yes we did the injector harness and a new gasket, that's been good. Oh we put the rubber plug in the front there, that's where the oil was coming from originally because it just kept falling out. Here I am, I'm a rubber plug, rubber plug and I'm going to fall out. Cheers. Alright, so that's more or less covered it. Oh yeah, I had to change the the indicator because the old one has rotted and it sometimes worked, sometimes it didn't, sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't which oddly enough is what they're supposed to do anyway um, yep. other jobs include a bit of scrubbing underneath and some um, buzz weld I'm going to try Whew. Um, is there anything else? oh my clock's still full bad So, 
Okay, one food bar clock. That's still to, still to do. Um, as you know at the moment, um, until payday comes round, which is in 10 days, I need to um, get some axle stands, some proper axle stands, fancy a new breaker bar, and a, uh, and a large torque wrench, one that goes up to over 300 uh, pounds. No, 300 pounds weight, not money. 300 pound money, flipping it. Uh, although they're not cheap anyway. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, so, it's good. Um, do, I, do I regret buying it? Yes, I would have preferred a V8. I should have held out for a V8. Um, do I like the colour? No. No, I prefer Lollipus colour, which is the gold, or I, I would like the silver one. It's, I don't know, it's a bit more regal. <sighs> I don't want to sound snobby, but it's just a nicer colour. The darker colour seems to be a bit more agricultural. Well, anyway, that's just me. Um, do I enjoy driving it? Hell yes! And that, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, slugs and snails, cats and dogs, bats and frogs, that's why we have one of these. Because we like driving it. Yes, we do. I do, anyway. I hope you feel the same way. I know that's how I, why, that's why we tolerate this, the various stuff that wear out. It's not as if it's a particularly bad model. Stuff wears out. It's 21 years old. Of course the gearbox isn't quite as good as it used to be. Of course the engine's a bit more tired. doesn't go as fast as it used to, if it never went fast at all. Um, yes, the bodywork's falling apart. Uh, but it's character. It's, it's just big and numb and stupid like me, and it's lovely. It's, it's old-fashioned. And it's kind of um, pokes, <laughs> pokes two fingers up at the, uh, the smooth, aerodynamic, fuel-efficient, cost-efficient thing we have now. Things we have now. <laughs> that might be just me as well. Um, I just like them because the hue, the practical. It's nice and big. You can chuck all the family in the back. Um, you can toddle off to the beach. You can toddle off up Glen, Glen Nevis if necessary. You can do a bit of green laning, you can then take, drop the back seats down, use it as a, as a van. I've had eight, seven foot mirrored wardrobe doors in, in Lollopy. Um, plus TV and all sorts. Not stolen, you understand, they were moving some of this uh, old stuff. And yeah, they're brilliant. Uh, plus, four-wheel drive so in winter coming around you don't have to worry about digging the bloody drive out to get the car out to get to work <sighs> okay right um, oh yeah one thing I did notice last time I went to Harry Potter um, I was coming back with the cruise control on and it stopped working now the thing was there was a lot of traffic so it was kind of on off on off on off a lot of the way up and i think it overheated or it just got fed up but it stopped working until i stopped at weeks on the way home to stop turn the turn it off went to buy some stuff came back and when i went back up the road towards home it the cruise control worked again so turn it, <laughs> turn it off turn it back on again everything's good so they all, it's, it's still up to, that's, that still works. Um, so we're happy with that, but uh, perhaps too much traffic is... The M1's are a pain these days. I used to be a van driver, I used to do the M1 every day, uh, at least the Derby. And they were okay. Um, I remember driving through Sheffield on the Tinsley Viaduct. And it was, it was something like Dante's Inferno. There was everywhere you looked, there was chimneys belching smoke, and there was fires, and there was the, all the furnaces, and all from all the foundries, and, um, all dotted about. And you used to, used to see, you see the enormous things they were, they were, they were casting and founding. And then, as the years went on, one by one, the fires went out, 
and now there's chuff all there's nothing it's all the industry's gone we've sold it all off well anyway <laughs> that's for another time so dear old jugs it to me is one year old and so um yeah uh, am i happy with it i'm i'm okay yeah technically it's not broken down i could drive it don't know how far i get but i could drive it and in a couple of weeks we'll find out why it's doing what it's done and then we can fix it and then we can drive it uh no I, after the mot i i imagine that's going to be a swift kick to the um nether regions as well <laughs> he chuckled loudly anyway people it's been lovely to see you oh hang on a minute i have to get me tea follow me right lovely to see you all take care um stay safe stay warm stay driving and don't get lost or squashed and i will see you in a bit cheers <laughs>